the Patriotic Front Vice President, the Patriotic Front Secretary General, all members of the Central Committee present here, all PF and independent members of Parliament present here, countrymen and women, members of the press, the media generally, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, allow me to first start by keeping in prayer our former national soccer team, the young man Justin Shonga, who recently passed away and was put to rest, or is being put to rest today. I'm not too sure, but I know he passed on. Condolences to the football family, the national team, and indeed the Football Association of Zambia. May he so rest. Allow me also, on a joyous occasion, to congratulate Sir Keir Sama for winning the elections in Great Britain today. He's becoming the new Prime Minister of Britain at the helm of the Labour Party that ruled 14 years ago. Congratulations are also in order. Uh, Rich Sunak, who has graciously and indeed is in the process of handing over power. Ladies and gentlemen, fellow Zambians, we are a proud sovereign state that is governed by a written constitution since independence. This has been the case for the past 60 years. Zambians have consistently fought to establish and entrench democratic rule and good governance by amending and strengthening their constitution from time to time. In 2016, I was your president of the Republic, and I approved comprehensive reforms to our constitution, which we all celebrate today, and many in the region admire. Out of the seven presidents, everyone knows that progressive constitutional reforms will forever be my political hallmark and leadership legacy. Therefore, as long as I'm alive, I will not abrogate my national duty to defend and protect our cherished democratic republic and constitution. Moreover, there is no man or woman in Zambia or abroad who is bigger or above our republic and constitution. Under our supreme national law, our democratic rule is anchored on the principle of separation of powers with the four very clear fundamental objectives and functions. These four pillars of separation of powers are one, to set limits on the work of the judiciary, the legislature, and the executive so that each of the three operates within their own autonomous space and respective jurisdiction. Number two, to ensure that there is no overlap in the powers and functions of these three different arms of government at any given point. Number three, to provide checks and balances on each other in order to guarantee the rule of law, accountability, transparency, and consolidation of democratic principles. Number four, to prevent abuses of power by any of the three arms of government 
and thereby protecting sovereignty, citizens' rights, national security, and peaceful coexistence. For the past three years since President Hakainde Hichilema came into power, we have seen a structured and coordinated campaign to undermine and erode the principle of separation of powers. Most stakeholders have factual stories of gross interference by the executive into the judiciary and legislature. On Wednesday, we saw our parliament making history by expelling nine patriotic front members of parliament. As former president, I can tell you that this gesture is the highest level of political brutality and unacceptable barbarism. Today, I join millions of Zambians to mourn the death of the principle of separation of powers in our country. The moment any of the three wings of government, that is the legislature, the judiciary and the executive, accept to be arbitrarily abused or overthrown by the other, then citizens must declare a national mourning for the funeral of the separation of powers. As everyone is aware, I was president for the Republic between 2015 to 2021. There was no time, no time whatsoever, that I called or met the Speaker of the National Assembly to instruct him, impose or arm twist him, because we in PF respected the principle of separation of powers. You can ask our former speaker, Dr. Patrick Matibini, State Council. He's still alive today. Unfortunately, this type of respect for separation of powers we practice under the Patriotic Front and the previous ruling parties has been washed away by this UPND government. Yes. Yes. From the time Misaka in the Hichilema took over the reins of power, we have seen the integrity of parliament being undermined and eroded with political impunity. The respected office of speaker has been abused to rubber stamp or endorse oppressive political actions against those perceived to be opponents of the ruling party or to be seen going against the will of the executive. This has been done with impunity. Ladies and gentlemen, if Zambia will not stand up to oppose and reject the illegal, immoral, and unconstitutional expulsion of the nine patriotic front members of parliament, then our citizens would have approved the brutal assassination of separation of power by the UPND government. Our media friends here can ask former Deputy Chief Justice, Mr. Mavid Mwanamwamwa, including current Chief Deputy Chief Justice, Mr. Michael Msonda, who are both alive, who have served at the top of the judiciary, whether when I was in State House, we ever interfered with the courts of law in this country. We never interfered or gave instructions to the judges. No. Never at all. No. No. Respect for the rule of law and separation of power was very, very important to us in PF, especially during the time that I occupied the high seat of president. So for our affected MPs, I feel your pain. And I feel your anguish because you are democratically elected to save your people 
and Zambians. I wish to promise here and commit myself to fight with you. Yes. Yes. We will do everything possible, yes. both politically and legally, to ensure that dictatorship does not take root in our country yes. over democracy. And I also wish to point out here that as far as the law and democracy is concerned, you are still our MPs. Yes. Yes. And you shall go back to parliament in the name and spirit of the rule of law and democracy. Yes. Those of you who have had time to look at the Article 72 of the Constitution mm. will bear me witness that uh, it's not easy under our Constitution no, to dismiss a member of parliament in the manner done. So those at ECZ who are acting with impunity should know that Zambia is a country of laws and we are going to fight using those laws. Ladies and gentlemen, you may know that in every sector there are good and bad seeds. As such, we sympathize with some of our independent and professional judges who are doing everything possible to professionally and independently Save the Zambian people. To these, ladies and gentlemen, I take my hat. I know we have some sound and credible judges who still defend justice and fairness for our people. To them, I want to promise you that a better Zambia is coming. Yes. Where you once more, you once more work independently and freely in the future, not too long from now. 2026 at the latest, we promise to restore rule of law as well as separation of powers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With our existence in government and a bigger and better team before us, we shall reverse this dangerous political trend set by the European government. As I said in Kitwe, I'm back and back in a better way. Yeah. I have been tried and tested, and I've passed the test. Mm. And I strongly believe that you can now trust me more for national leadership. Our future government will be inclusive, as you have seen from our Uka family. Our future government will embrace everyone across Zambia to voluntarily join hands now and in future. So let's join hands now to fight and defeat and democratically crush this emerging dictatorship called UPND government. If we don't do that, we'll be crushed, all of us. We pray to God that sooner or later, Zambians shall have an inclusive government, a government that hates tribalism. In true sense of the word, a government that detests tribalism, a government that detests nepotism, a government that detests regionalism, and through our inclusive collision alliances. Remember, when I came back on the 28th October, I made this clarion call, and I want to repeat that uh, we are going to embrace all those who are opposed to the injustice that is being perpetrated by the UPND government led by Mr. Hakainde Chilema. And as a political father for all Zambians, I'm ready to engage and embrace anyone who erred or went astray to come back to PF. Mm. Mm. PF is a bigger family. And Mr. Sata left it in my hands, and I will leave it in the hands of those who are willing to embrace all of us. Yes. When the time comes, may God bless you all, and I thank you. Thank you. We take some questions. Thank you. <clears throat>
You may take it. Oh, thank you. Thank you. This is a press conference. A uh, press conference for members of the press. We are glad that members of the Central Committee MPs and others have joined us, but essentially it's a press conference. I will invite members of the press to ask their questions. Um, I know there are a lot of things that we must discuss, but unfortunately we ought to restrict ourselves to the speech that has been delivered by the President. I think you heard he has condemned the rising dictatorship, is condemned the blaring of separation of powers and interference of institutions such as Parliament, the judiciary, ECZ, by the executive and by the president. He has condemned tribalism, regionalism, nepotism. I think we need to restrict ourselves to the issues that the president raised. If there are any questions, I invite whoever wishes to ask your question. Okay, my dear brother, introduce yourself and tell us where you're coming from. Thank you, Ernest. Any other question? Well, introduce yourself and your name and institution. Um, Joseph Ahmed Banda from Time TV. I, I just want to get views from the CC as the president. Because uh, we have been receiving sentiments from those in government that the um, government has no hand in what is happening in the PF. Are you in any way following this? <coughs> sentiments from those of the government. Uh, can you confirm to, to the media this afternoon that indeed PF you are intact uh, because calls from those in government have been that you are failing to resolve these internal angles amongst <coughs> yourselves. Are you failing to resolve these internal angles that you are experiencing as a party? Can you confirm to the media that you are intact? Thank you, Joseph. Any other? Yes, you mustn't. Thank you so much for the afternoon, Excellence, and uh, in Jaya, Victoria. I'm Innocent Peel from KDN TV. Just basically a follow up to what my colleague, uh, here, Comrade Man uh, Chanda, has talked about. Your Excellence, my question to you is um, what are the, or what could be a practical, you know, resolve to this issue that you talked about? The country is aware, the world is aware that uh, you've been addressing the press by these press briefings. But the question is, the country seems to be at a point where certain things may require practical solutions. What do you, do you think should be done? Eradicate all these issues that we're talking to, to me about, beyond us taking notes of the pens and the papers and stuff like that. What is the answer? Thank you, Innocent. His Excellency will take the three questions, Your Excellency. We'll start with Enes Chanda from the Mass. Um, he says, what could be motivating this scheme against the Patriotic Front? Uh, Brother Enes Chanda, you have to know that uh, there's so much fear on the part of uh, President HH. Fear arising from failure to deliver. Yeah. Yeah. Haunted yeah. when you compare and contrast, like I keep saying, his leadership and that of PF miles apart, right? So he's restless. If only he could deliver one-tenth, probably he would be sleeping pretty easy. But he has failed lamentably. So this is what is causing all these things. And that's why he even says they are regrouping. I'll go for the next. And this is exactly what he's doing. Uh, you know, so it's not surprising at all to some of us uh, that he's going to this extent and he's still going to go even further in trying to eradicate the PF. He knows that it's the only PF which can unseat him. Because the Zambians have weighed him, measured him, tested him and tried him and he has failed the test. So he has no place, no reason for being in the State House. That's what is causing all these things. Then Your Excellency Joseph from Prime TV 
is asking, he's saying government keeps on saying that they have no hand in the happenings in the PF. They think that it is internal wrangles that we are failing to resolve. Uh, Joseph is asking for your uh, view and he's also asking, is the PF intact? What did you say? <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 mean, you mean you didn't see what happened on the 24th of October 2023? How could Miles Sampalon, working with the that other, other, other rascals, <laughs> hmm? convene within short notice a conference at Mulungush International Conference Center with the compliments of Zambia police at, at the Beck and Co? You mean the police are managed by who? By the Inspector General of Police, who takes orders from? the President of the Republic. So that is just one example. The Registrar of Societies worked overnight to change membership of the registered members of the party. Who runs the Registrar of Societies office? GRZ. So who is the, the, the top man at GRZ? Is the Secretary of Cabinet working with the President. They are the managers of the civil service. So we have so many examples. Fingerprints were checked in the night, then the police so I, I don't think really, uh, Joseph, you will need much more than that. And you've seen how swiftly they've moved in over the developments of getting uh, uh, Robert Chavinga in. Yeah? Uh, the same ink, the same paper, the same pen, which was used to appoint uh, Chavinga was used to dethrone him, but the speaker refused to recognize that. Isn't that an example of manipulation, Mingalato? So, so, so I think that I can give you so, so, many, so many examples. So you are asking whether, uh, do those examples suffice? <laughs> I, think, I think they suffice. But, but you see, um, you, 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 you can also uh, see that uh, even when we go to court, yeah, we go to court, they will dismiss us. You go to look for an injunction to restrain somebody, they will say, come after one week, come after one year. When it's in their interest, they will give an injunction ex parte the same day. Yeah. It happened yesterday. So I think that he, uh, you are a journalist, and I think you can read what is written, and you can also read in between the lines and so on. The PF is intact, my brother. Very intact. We, we, like I said, we have some rascals. <laughs> and in every household, you may find that one or two children are abused by their colleagues to take on their parents. Because either they are loved too much, or they are the only ones who can take on their parents and so on. So every institution has one or two bad seeds, like I said. So we do have bad seeds, but we are intact. Certainly we are intact. And there's only one PF that we know of, the legitimate PF headed by me. Yes. So, so, so to imagine what is taking place, the circus taking place elsewhere, we as PF are saying, we'll have the last laugh. And Zambians are getting increasingly angry by the day with this kind of thing because they feel that the institutions of governance, the executive and the legislature have been abused to a point where now the respect that the public has for them has reduced completely, such that some people are saying, what next? And this takes me to the next question of Mr. Innocent Piri, practical solutions. Yeah. Yeah? You see here, when I say that yeah. Yeah. when your back is against the wall and you cannot fight back, you will do what might not be prescribed. So I have been painfully holding back many Zambians saying, no, please, 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 let's give these guys a chance. Let's allow the law to take its course and so on. Taking to the streets is not something I would like to support because what happens when people take the streets, you can see how Kenya is now. Huh? That I wouldn't uh, wish to, 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 to proclaim, uh, but uh, I know that one day we'll march peacefully, I hope we'll be allowed to march. 
Yeah? And that's the nearest I can go to processions, processions to demonstrate our frustration and anger at the way we're being governed. That, I think, is within the law, and we can do it. We'll get to that later as we go. People going with placards saying, HH must resign, that is within the law. HH have failed, that is within the law. We will do that at an appropriate time. But for now, I think we will do advocacy so that other people also can speak. I saw a very powerful statement from one chief in Kawamba, and to him I say, can I be some of them being? Can I be some of them being? We, we, need, we, need, we need more voices from the church. We need more voices from civil society. We need more voices from all those who care about Zambia. I think that I can advocate. That is a practical solution. But when that fails, obviously we'll take the streets, we will march to parliament, or we'll march to state house. That is within the law. So uh, I, I think that uh, let's not advocate practical solutions which will destroy this country because uh, already the country is destroyed and whoever will be president in 2026 will have a mammoth task mm -hmm. to reconstruct this country, the economy and everything else. So let's not get to practical solutions which are inimical to the well-being of uh, good law and order. Thank you, Your Excellency. We'll take the last three. Yes. Your name and... Uh... Mr. President, my name is Blessing and I will represent the county. Uh, Mr. President, last year on the, on the 24th, uh, Mao Samba was already elected as the, the new PF president, which prompted you, Mr. President, to come back into the politics. Um, fast forward, Mr. President, not too long ago, we saw pictures on Facebook, you and Mr. Samba. I want to find out, and the Zambian people need to know, what is the status quo between you and Mr. Samba and you? Also mentioned, Mr. President, that you are going to fight a political and legal uh, what happened in Parliament. Are you going to fight together with Minister Samba? Thank yes, you. Sir. Blessings. May we have two more? Yes. Uh, Joseph Band again from TV. Uh, Joseph Nakavid. <laughs> Joseph. <laughs> Speaking uh, from the raw point of view as an NF Council, uh, Mr. President, uh, would you? help us understand because we want to know the nine expelled or the nine nullified seats uh, if the by-elections were to go on they have not caused these by-elections will those affected MPs be eligible to be contested because they have not caused those by-elections thank you Joseph a lady, a lady where are the lady journalists IP again Thank you so much. Uh, my apologies. I have to come back again. Um, I'm receiving a lot of uh, notice back here, so I have to come back. Mm -hmm. So basically the question I have is in regards to the capacity of uh, President Akane Echiyama to resolve uh, the issues such as uh, the high cost of living. We can talk about the high cost of our uh, milling. We talk about the low shedding. And we are uh, not forgetting the cure. That's a question that landed on my desk right now. Do you think the president has the capacity to handle those things and mean the, the, I mean the, the by-election, the possible by-election that may come along with it, keep us <coughs> in that end? Lastly, our ears this morning, we got a wind of an order involving a conversation body on, on, on Emmanuel J. Banda mm -hmm. and some people in government. Whether true or not, but you can't blame our ears. You've listened to that. What is your take over these issues? That's lastly. Thank you, IP. Thank you. Your next one, let's start with blessings. He was asking about Mao Sampa yeah. and uh, the current status with Mao Sampa. Yeah, Mao Sampa is my young brother. And he. I would like to believe uh, that uh, the members in their wisdom have a lot of saying. One of them is, you know, we should learn to help those who have fallen. And at the same time, uh, find a way of rehabilitating them. I think I did refer to uh, a line or two in my, 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 my speech where I said that we are ready to have people who have fallen on the wayside, back into the party if they so choose to work with us. And the examples, of course, are many. 
We have worked with people who have previously gone away, insulted us, called us names, and so on. We have included them. So we are talking to Mayo Sampa, and I think he, for now it will be premature for me to say anything beyond the fact that he, we have healthy contacts and he, we are looking for a way of putting the bad patch we experience behind us, and this will be done pretty soon. Uh, Joe, Joseph, you came with another question. What is the question? That as a lawyer, do you think that the nine expelled, especially that they didn't cause a by-election, that they are eligible to contest? I, I was looking at that call 72 of the Constitution just a while ago. It is very illustrative. It says that if you have been wrongly treated by your political party, expelled in this case, you can go to court. And the court will adjudicate on the matter. And if the court finds that the expulsion was unconstitutional, oppressive, was out of the dictates of democracy, then you can choose to remain in parliament as an independent. That is what the law says. But if the court so finds that you are indeed the guilty of some misconduct or wrongdoing, and the party was correct in rejecting you or expelling you, then only then do you lose the seat. And I think the courts ought to write to ECZ to say, look, this seat has fallen vacant because of this, this, this. Then the court will authenticate the expulsion. ECZ will manoeuvre and get to to, to <coughs> have an election. That's what my understanding of the law is. And the, uh, I know that uh, I may be uh, probably rusty in my understanding of the law, but uh, I think I'm correct on this particular one. Thank you, mm. Innocent Piri says uh, with the crisis the country is facing, economic crisis, cost of living crisis, and all the crisis, load shedding, the disease outbreaks, does President Naka in the HLM have capacity to resolve this issue? And then he referred to the issue of the Manuel J.J. Banda, the recording that's raging in the country currently. You know, as an opposition party leader, whatever I say about uh, President H.H. H. will be perceived from that angle that he, I'm just being a opposition. But the truth is, ask any Zambian on the minibus today, I've heard of stories of people being told, can you please drop this passenger? Because people saying we're willing to pay for this passenger because he's now testing our patience with this. If it's not you, not you, not you. So, so probably the public can answer that question for you. You are a journalist and just go and jump on the minibus to Matero today and try and exhort and sing praise for HH and you see how they will treat you. So I, I think that, that, that sounds it. Uh, the course of election obviously is another waste and the, we don't want to go that route. We shouldn't go that route at all. And, that, and, and you know why? That's why that Article 72 was brought into the Constitution to safeguard the parliamentary seats from being abused by people resigning or defecting or being fired willy-nilly. That's exactly why it is there. So if you go and read it, as a journalist, I know it's plain English, you understand what I'm talking about. That particular Article 72 was deliberated upon by a lot of other commissions on the Constitution to protect members of parliament from being abused by their parties, and this is a good example. So I've also heard of that audio, and I can tell you that that audio has been in existence for some time. They were trying to suppress it. Eh? They were trying to suppress it. There's one minister in, on, on, on that audio. I don't know whether you've heard the whole thing, but it goes for about one hour, 30 minutes. It's long. Eh? One permanent secretary in the company of another went to see Jajen's family and talked and talked and talked and told them to just withdraw that statement implicating the, the three musketeers from State House. So, so, so uh, my comment is that uh, when we tell you that these things are happening, you should believe us because they're happening. And uh, you know, they, 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 what I can tell you is uh, when you get thugs 
uh, you get thugs or criminals, you give them state power. This is what happens. Yeah. Yeah. what happens. So, so we need to wake up and fight to restore decency, integrity, and morality amongst our leaders. We never did that ourselves. We never did. If we did, they wouldn't have even managed to campaign and get into power. We never did that. And we, I, I, don't, I don't think he, any well-meaning Zambian who is privileged to be at the highest level would let his uh, men do what is being done. Because yes. he was supposed to check them up and say, sorry, you can't do this. Yeah? And he let your word be your word. But in the hypocrisy we have seen, I know that he will be compelled to say, no, I don't support this. It's not me. But meanwhile, he's telling them, I'm a woman. Yeah? So that's what he does. So, so, so I think it's a shame, an indictment on the executive that he, they are doing criminal acts in the name of the state. And that should not be allowed. But we, time will come when somebody will be made to answer. And those who are accepting to do wrong things in the name of superior instructions will be personally liable. That's the bad part of this experience. So if you follow instructions from your boss, which are criminal in nature, and you execute them, when the time comes, the buck stops at you as a police officer, as a civil servant, as a government agency, to, 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 to answer to the people of Zambia. You won't say, no, I was sent by President HS. You won't say that at all. It will not be a defense. So let me warn those colleagues who are privileged to be in power or to serve the state, that time will come when they'll be made answerable in their individual capacities. Thank you, Your Excellency. At this stage, I will invite all of us to stand and honorable Godfrey Smiley uh, to close in prayer.